Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader review video. My name is Michael. And this is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Nook HD. This is the follow-up and they're relatively the same size as the Nook Color and Nook Tablet. First of all, the resolution has been dramatically increased. You're looking at 1440 by 990, which is a pretty odd resolution um, standards, the first one we've ever seen with these exact stats. A 7-inch screen, of course, and a dual-core 1.3 gigahertz processor. It has the same amount of RAM as its bigger brother, the Nook HD Plus, with 1 gig, and you have two options in terms of memory, an 8 or a 16 gig model, and of course, micro SD support, but Peter will tell you all about that. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which means that you could hook up an external keyboard or a game controller no cameras and a 10 hour battery life so it's on par with the Kobo Arc in terms of how long you'll be able to wheel and deal. Let's take a look at the 360. Not a fan of the white uh, colored one. Looks like a bar of soap to me and it certainly is dramatically different from the Nook tablet which is uh, the past kind of unit and it looks nothing like it. I mean, the Nook tablet looks like the Nook HD Plus, which is kind of keeping the whole theme of, you know, the chiseled edge and the little loop and all that and the, the, the bezel kind of all nice and, you know, grayed out and stuff. And then you get this and it's... It's a huge departure from yes. anything else they've ever done. And it's weird because the, the new releases were the Nook HD and the Nook HD Plus. And of course, we will get into a full video comparison in the, uh, in the future, but the theme is not consistent and they're kind of... It's just kind of out of nowhere to me, but either way, the resolution's pretty tight. It's a very it's a 16 by 9 esque screen, so it's not going to be more like an iPad where it's more of a square. It's very long. Uh, nothing really going on in the front. You have the end button, which uh, takes you to the home. You have your uh, Nook jack, as it were. I'm not really sure what they're calling this yet, but this is the proprietary Nook plug and it does uh, look very much like an Apple one but it does not fit in any Apple products as we've tested. You also have a status indicator light with a SD card slot right there expandable up to 32 gigs. Nothing going on, on the right you have a uh, up and down volume, power button slash standby, 3.5 mil headphone jack and a microphone. On the back we have our embossed and hard rubber backing and for some reason stereo speakers whereas the Nook HD Plus only has one. Yeah, so let's take a look at the software experience now. Okay, when you uh, like stuff and... And things and such. <laughs> yeah, 15, some right such. away. 15. So this is, when you powered it on, this is what you're looking at. Now, we've actually created profiles on the Nook Tablet HD Plus, and we've, when we rebooted the Nook HD, which is the tablet you're looking at here, it actually retained those profiles. So, Shu is our default profile, and these, Goody and Amy, is our kids' profiles. So, let's just take a look at the kids' profile first. And this is something that you could actually uh, set up your kid for. Now you can see that they only have access to apps and library. And we'll show you in a second what everyone else has access to. So we restricted this particular profile from viewing certain things. If we go back to our main profile that has no restrictions, you will see that everything is accessible. Yeah. So <laughs> One of the things is when you're signing up a new profile, you can actually limit them from things like the web browser, uh, from the store. Um, you could actually name it. Uh, so you can actually, you know, name your kid. How old are they? And, and Nook will give them access to a wide array of content. And you can also, uh, it, it also asks for what your kid is into. So if you choose mystery and all that kind of stuff, fantasy, it'll give you suggestions for those. Yeah, totally. So <coughs> the, you can see here the panorama is similar to what uh, the Kindle does on their Kindle Fireline, but this is more of like a 3D approach. But it doesn't seem like a, a great uh, way to do real estate. You can see how much space is there you know, mm -hmm. where you could, um, and, and all the icons are smaller. Now, obviously with the Kindle, 
you could um, side load in your own apps and content so some of the things in the panorama look pixelated but with the Nook uh, tablet range the Nook HD and HD plus doesn't allow you to side load in your own apps which is unfortunate because uh, the Nook app store doesn't really have a wide array of uh, you know content that you can get uh, for instance, you can't get, uh, you know, Zinio, Press Reader, Comixology, uh, Marvel apps or anything like that. Yeah, you can try searching for them. Uh, we tried on the HD Plus. Uh, and because you can't download anything sideloaded, whatever's on the marketplace is on the marketplace. And that's all you're able to get. Right. So what this means is if you're into comic books, you can't buy single issues. You can only buy graphic novels. And with graphic novels... Obviously, if, um, you know, Avengers versus X-Men, which is the big thing during the summertime, but it's not even in graphic novel format yet, which means that you're like four months behind any of the things that are really occurring. But uh, in retrospect, you can see here when we went to books, you got channels, New York Times bestsellers, new releases, everything is organized very well. And the one thing with the, the Nook line is that they've really done a good job at making the store more intuitive and taking advantage of screen real estate. If you look at earlier models, like say the Nook tablet, the store is a bit convoluted. There's look, you know, if you look at even like the main screen, look how much is here. This is an effective use of screen real estate. This it's is kind of silly. You have a two by three grid here. Um, and, and then a list that it's just kind of a lot of it is just redundant too and it's not making the best use of space as michael said and yeah. it is flickering here because they actually use a different screen technology from device to device right and you know this is and that's not flickering obviously in real life no it's just because of the camera so you have things like uh newspapers and you could take subscriptions out because this is the u.s model you only have access to u.s newspapers and you don't have a press access to press reader in the app store, so you can't get like international newspapers. But you can do movies and TV. But again, even if you have a U.S. billing address and credit card, you can't access movies, rentals, or purchases um, outside the U.S. So if you do buy this in the U.S. and you do a lot of traveling internationally, and you buy movies and you rent movies, you can't actually watch them, exactly. which is unfortunate. You'll see here just show you real quick we you can pay for and download the um the movies however once you try to view them via stream it either just loads forever or you try downloading and it says it's unavailable to your nook because you're outside the usa yeah, so one of the interesting things about uh, the library is how they've really changed it over previous Nook models. You see a little cloud here. Those are books that we've purchased but haven't downloaded to the device. If you actually click those, what they do is they uh, just load up, and uh, from your account, it will download to this device, and it will be the same whether you have a Nook Tablet HD, Nook Tablet, or so forth. So here's the reading experience. Kind of gives you a little bit on how to use it. You can search for words within the book. You could share and like things on Facebook. You can also do a lot of things here. I like the slider bar that the Kobo Arc has because you have a lot more customization, whereas you just have really the eight levels that the uh, the Nook gives you. Everything changes live for the most part. There's a full refresh basically on everything you do, but it's, it's not really the end of the world. Margins, um, different font styles. What's really interesting is that you have six themes. Not only do you have black on white reversed, you actually have gray on white, off white, brown, and cream. So a lot of customization based on how exactly reading affects your eyes. And you can also quick navigate to chapters and introductions and all that kind of stuff. Notes and highlights, bookmarks. 
and go back quick to look at your menu. Uh, what types of things can you do with like highlights and things like that? Press and hold will bring up the little menu at the top and if you make a highlight you'll see that it, by default it may be a certain color. If you click that you can choose different colors from there such as green and yellow. You can also remove highlight or add note. You can add note by clicking something you've already highlighted or by just adding a note utilizing the second option on this. Share quote is basically kind of what we showed you Twitter, Facebook, share it with your friends exactly. and such. Exactly. Look up is uh, whether you want to look up uh, the word you clicked on into a dictionary or Google or Wikipedia. The last one is actually really useful. Lorraine, for example, if I click find in book, it's going to find every time Lorraine is mentioned in the particular book. So whether you, know, you don't know who that character is, it'll kind of zip over to that page and find it. Of course, uh, you can turn on animated page turns with uh, another function here. We won't go into that right now. One of the things that uh, this does well is uh, read. Oh, right there. It tells you on a different device, which we were exploring on the Nook HD+. Plus. So here's how it looks in portrait mode. Normally, magazines look a little bit better, but of course, you can put it into landscape mode as well. So that's what we'll do just so to give you a li little bit better of an experience so we can zoom in a little bit more. But you have uh, animated page turns and as you can see that a little bit different. One thing uh, Nook has introduced is a feature called article view which gives you a little bit a little bit better experience so you don't have to like be pinching and zooming and things like that. It's very easily readable like this. Well yeah, I mean font sizes on newspaper and magazines we all know have always been really small. So this gives you the flexibility to go from that to almost the full page without pinching and zooming. Yeah, one thing that you could do is uh, with magazines is that you could assemble them, them into scrapbooks and this is a new feature. So you could make a new scrapbook And uh, while we're here, this is the keyboard. It's um, fairly, it's fairly decent. standard. And then you can go to other pages. Hey, I like that. At Fashion Ad, let's add that to Goody Reader 2. Clipping saved. we can click there and go to all pages in the magazine. For Something you can't do in a real magazine, which is a very good feature. Yeah, and uh, you can create bookmarks, go to your table of contents, or if you want to see like what this is all about, what the subscription fees are, it tells you free trial and read. Okay, so we go to our library. We've looked at, you know, so far we've looked in the ebook, magazines, but there's actually newspapers as well. So these are newspapers from uh, the Barnes and Noble store. And you can see it's uh, very much sort of like an ebook. You can see some articles here. You can click on the picture and get like the full article. Once you're in this kind of article mode, it it really performs like an ebook. You have all the same yeah. uh, the settings, and you have all the same font styles and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, really handy. Yeah, so we'll rehash yeah. everything that you could do, but you can do a lot. And yeah, I mean, new. This isn't the newspaper that you grew up with, or this is even like how newspapers usually show up on Press Reader. This is all like Barnes and Noble proprietary technology and things like that. Breaking down the newspaper really into links you can click and organize sections. Yeah. So some people may like it, some people won't, but it is a fresh way to uh, go about doing things. Uh, here's the scrapbook that we just did. So these are. Not the magazine, these are the pages out of the magazine we've actually collected. Of course, peeking and things like that. We have a comic book here as well. Page turn animations. Very, uh, the colors are really nice. 
I think the colors are very high resolution, very vivid. Sort of same thing with like a lot of the other things uh, that we've seen. You know, this is pretty standard, allows you like quick navigation. Same thing, table of contents, doesn't really apply to comics, but let's flip this into uh, portrait mode because, you know, comics are best read in this mode. Absolutely. So, so you could see that when we did flip it into portrait mode, it's uh, the whole page is just basically right there. I think comics look way better in portrait mode. I totally agree. So while you're zoomed in, you can't flip, pa oh, I guess you can, which is cool. Most comic apps don't let Most you do, don't that. do that. If you're zoomed in, you actually have to zoom out Double in order tap. to turn yeah. pages. Yeah. So it does have higher resolution, but this isn't like retina resolution. No. So you're not getting like those HD style comics. And again, I'm a huge comic fan. I'm disappointed that I can't buy single issues that I'm relegated to just buying outdated graphic novels, but sort of just the way that I feel. Of course, you can download things like Netflix and watch videos, picture galleries, music players, contact list. Most of this is pretty standard fare. Won't really like dive into it. But let's show you an example of like a kids uh, of a, more of like a kidsy type game. We just uh, downloaded this off of the app market to test whether to test whether we could uh, download applications in Canada, and you can. Uh, you can pay for uh, applications in Canada as long as you have a U.S. credit card and a U.S.A. billing address. So it's definitely something you can do. Let's get a crash going here. <clears throat> Games run smoothly. Um, I mean, it's dual core, one gig RAM. You're not going to see any lagging or clipping or anything like that. Yeah, so... It does handle games pretty well. With the higher resolution magazines and things like that stand out. Uh, Peter, what are your final thoughts on this device? Final thoughts overall. Um, I, I don't like how they've strayed so far away from the typical Nook tablet, Nook color look they've had for years into this weird soap bar looking thing. I just I don't know what they're doing with that. I don't like the thick bezel here and the thin over here. Not a big fan of how it looks at all. Um, I also don't know why they don't have any cameras, whereas the Kindle Fire does. I also don't know why the Nook HD, the lower model, has stereo speakers, whereas the gigantic Nook HD Plus higher model has only one speaker on the bottom left. Very strange. Also, my final thing is that it completely, in terms of a make-it-or-break-it uh, scenario, the fact that you cannot install Android applications on an Android device from outside sources completely just breaks it for me. I, I, it, it completely turns me off from the unit. I, like a Kindle Fire, I like to be able to download stuff both from the marketplace that's on the device, but if I wanted to, from other sources. And be, the fact that I cannot on this completely just pulls me away from it. Yeah, I mean, article view is cool. I mean, it applies to the internet experience. It applies towards, like, magazines, uh, newspapers, and things like that. Um, you know, this is our website, Goody Reader, and we have article view on one of the, t the titles here. You can pinch and zoom, which is cool, or you can go to the browser-based view, and you can see it's fundamentally different. This kind of gets rid of all, like, author profiles and things like that. It just focuses on the meat and potatoes of the matter, which is, like, the article, which I find is cool. Um, innovative features. You know, article view. Um, it has a number of, you know, the scrapbooking. It has, like, the kids' logins. It does things that no one else really does. Uh, being in Canada, I don't know if this device would be the right one for us because it, you're having to jump through, like, a million hoops. I'd rather stick with, like, say, the Kobo Arc, which is very international friendly. Unless you live in the U.S. or the U.K., you're fairly limited on what you can do with the Nook Tablet HD. Uh, beyond that, I mean, if you do have a U.S. billing address and credit card from, say, Shopee Readers, you can access anything but videos. And so, um, you know, ten, you know, you can get 1080p. You can get a uh, high-quality music. The two speakers really make uh, music and video shine. 
Of course, you can watch things like Netflix if you don't have access to um, movies from Barnes & Noble. But I would say the Barnes & Noble app market is severely lacking. You can't get a lot of alternative reading apps like Kobo. Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, or anything else. So you're, you're pretty well locked into Barnes & Noble's walled garden. And I'm not a huge fan of being locked into anything. Uh, but if I lived in the US, this would probably be everything that I need, and then some. Uh, little, some things are a little bit higher priced. You know, with movies, you know, like $18.99 just yeah. to, like, to, 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 to rent is a little, little too, too crazy. But I do like the way that Barnes & Noble has revised their store. For me, that, that's a total win. Very intuitive and uh, very user-friendly. We've been doing things all day, and it has not really locked up or um, you know diminished because of the things that we are doing when we're multitasking. Like Everything's still open. Everything's very quickly. So we want to hear your thoughts. You've heard ours. Leave a comment on this video. If you're watching this video on another source, youtube.com slash goodyreader is our channel name. And for all the latest news, previews, interviews, and everything else, check out our website at goodyreader.com. And for a review of the Barnes & Noble Nook Tablet HD, my name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care.